All Hermes has to do is reach for a damsel, squeeze her fingertips, and look long into her clear starry eyes without a hint of a blink. Then pull her to him close enough for her to feel his lips whisper against her cheek. Come with me. Every girl appears on his arm as a dazzling ornament, enchanting him for an hour or a day. And Hermes is never seen with the same girl twice, being careful to return each treasure to her father's doorstep, undamaged, but blissfully honored at having been with him, of course, Hermes Thomas, Esquire, and eligible. The maidens of Soleil are groomed to marry heads of state, financiers, deans of universities, researchers, and authors, to become presidents of their own philanthropies and mothers. Hermes regards them all with the same affection a girl child reserves for her doll. A whimsical distraction from the stumbles of growing up. A brief, fantastic escape, then set aside and forgotten when playtime ends. Rollins, thought Hermes, returns to his lair flushed from the thrill of searching for the woman who face plants a man at her ankles. But if any man should be so lucky as to find this woman, and finally raises his face toward the skies, and he sees that all of heaven's stars aligned themselves in a silent nod above his head, then this man has arrived at the absolute knowledge that he has found his Eve and his perfect missing rib. The woman who makes him rush to buy a house in Soleil, the only place to where he will bring home his dozen yet-to-be-born children. I have seen this lady in Madeleine, but she loves me only as she ought, like a brother-in-law, and so a hole burns in my heart. Thus it is the little brick house at Seven Soleil, Hermes Thomas is determined to own.